one of the major findings that uh, we've come across during our visits to the neighboring countries is that uh, there has been a rise, a sharp rise in the people wanting to leave the country. And the incidence of cross-border, uh, <coughs> uh, let's say, uh, people crossing the border is uh, on that particular strip between North Korea and China. But in uh, some cases, uh, there have been incidents of uh, people being repatriated by the authorities on the border. And uh, this, is, this is a matter of, of great concern for, uh, for the international community and also for the United Nations. And in terms of uh, the principle of non refoulement, which requires that uh, people seeking refuge in other countries are, are not uh, forcibly repatriated to their country of origin uh, against their will. The distinction being made between asylum seekers and uh, economic refugees will need to be determined by a, a procedure that meets international standards. And therefore, it can't be just a unilateral uh, action on, on the part of any country in returning these uh, people without a, a considered base in uh, making a determination of their actual status. But with regard to the uh, people leaving North Korea, invariably, it has been the case historically that almost all people wanting to leave North Korea are by definition asylum seekers. If only because the general repression that's prevailing there, which uh, affects a whole range of other uh, rights, including economic rights that are being deprived, and therefore, <clears throat> apart from being economic refugees, they are actually asylum seekers fleeing from political repression. I've had to visit the neighboring countries, countries that are primarily impacted by the, the policies of, the, uh, of uh, North Korea. Uh, in this regard, uh, the Republic of Korea and Japan. Uh, with regard to these two countries, uh, a common issue is the unresolved uh, matter of uh, uh, abductions that have taken place over the years. And uh, in the case of uh, Japan, it's a continuing uh, issue of uh, uh, 12 uh, cases. And in the case of uh, the Republic of Korea, it's uh, around about 500 cases of uh, abductions that have not been resolved uh, so far. And uh, therefore, this is, uh, these are issues that uh, I'm appealing to the North Korean authorities to, to take up and to undertake <coughs> uh, investigations uh, so that this uh, could then be resolved uh, apart from the other the larger issues that continue to, uh, to uh, prevail within the country and uh, that has bearing on the relationship with the uh, two set countries. It's uh, universally known that uh, a overriding issue in North Korea is the uh, recurring food crisis due to uh, post harvest conditions due to uh, severe uh, winters and all that, but also aggravated by a, a deficient, uh, structurally deficient uh, uh, public distribution system, which is uh, politically discriminatory uh, and uh, e economically stifling. I have been uh, trying to appeal to the North Koreans to allocate uh, larger resources for uh, agricultural reforms, uh, which would mean, of course, uh, a review of their policies of uh, allocating resources primarily to the, to the military. Uh, I think the international community should be vigilant on this, and that is to separate the humanitarian issue from any uh, political considerations of uh, addressing a population that is known to be in, in, in chronic uh, uh, need for uh,
continuous assistance uh, year in, year out because of the uh, shortcoming of that, of that system in place there that is uh, basically uh, incapable of feeding its own people.